Oh, hi, hey, hello, we are back making a video that hopefully people will click on. Oh, I don't know. Your rat knife video was a strong return to form. Well, I mean, it could have had a sense rat of knife. attention grabbing, you know, pretty gross. People like, people like rat knives, don't they? Rat knife. Uh, okay, so Mikey Emler, old Uncle Mike, he put a tag out. Well, I actually put the tag out. Oh, about a year and a half ago, about uh, five knives that make you happy. And he's put a tag out saying, what's another five knives that make you happy? Checkmate. Well, I thought I would do a response video with another five knives that give me the slight fizz. These are probably not making me as happy as the last ones because they're the ones that I would have thought of last time. Although that being said, most of these are new, so maybe they do make me as happy. Don't know, happiness is hard to gauge. Right, so we'll go one by one. We're gonna start off with the most predictable knife that makes me happy is <laughs> the Alma Eagle. This was in the last list. Yes, it was, but not the flat ground version. Uh, I may be slightly um, fixated on this knife design. My buddy Brian um, sent me, when he hooked me up with one of the other knives on the table, handy Brian, uh, he sent me this one along as well. And this was, I admit, the dr the one that I was, was dreaming of when I used to pour over these knives. I did end up getting the Sabre Ground version, which I do also love with the swedge on the top. But this was the purest form of the knife for me. I love this blade. This is probably my favorite knife pattern. I think it's the most elegant looking pocket knife that you can get. Uh, I, it just does it for me. So having the idealized version certainly does make me extremely happy. These knives aren't particularly high performers. The Steel's AUS-8, it's got a decent flat grind and it. it's a very, these Japanese ones especially from back in the day, they don't make these anymore, uh, made really well and uh, you know the Steel is about the best kind of AUS-8 you can get but still it's a pretty basic knife in terms of materials. Polished Micarta and uh, AUS-8, they're always too expensive for what they are as well but again it's not really a logical you know, choice behind it, it's just how it looks and I just think it's the best looking one. Uh, next up, we're gonna go with, this is the Paramilitary 2 by Spyderco. How inventive, how imaginative, I know. But this one makes me happy because Sean, who is the, I've known him since he used to just be called simply Big Brown <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, now he's the Big Brown Bear and then there was Triple B Handmade is his current sort of uh, knife because now he's a pro knife guy. He's moved into the knives as, as a way of making a living. And he is a steel guy. And this knife kind of is to me the culmination of, of Sean going from just a dude, just a dude with a few thoughts, to being basically engaged with the biggest knife geek company, uh, which is Spyderco. If you're a knife geek, Spyderco are the, usually the biggest sort of, the biggest of the big, you know, with all the stuff that they geek out over. Uh, and to see Sean being taken into that fold and having like a, a say in the steels and the heat treatments and things working with him, getting his logo on the side of it, that makes me, uh, it gives me compersion, a sense of compersion. Seeing someone else uh, happy makes me happy. Someone like Sean, I think it's very well deserved. He's definitely always been the man in the know about um, the steels. He knows a lot more than me about how these things actually uh, end up in the knives rather than just me with a bunch of rudimentary you know, testing stats. Sean knows it more from start to finish and he's definitely someone worth listening to. Uh, in my opinion, I will often defer to what Sean says if I don't know something. So seeing him get in with the glasses certainly uh, makes me happy for him, who I assume also is happy. Number two. Yeah, two kitchen knives. I've been using a lot, I've been doing a lot of kitchen work lately. Uh, we'll start off with the Gary Creeley uh, Omnivore. This is like a little petty knife. And this, as an aside, I am very much, I'm not a, I don't know everything about kitchen knives. I sort of approach kitchen knives, as you probably do, as like a pocket knife or fixed blade knife guy. Um, and I always find myself a little bit baffled, even in the highest end kitchen knives. Yes, there is some ZDP 189 bouncing around, but even pretty high end kitchen knives, the steel kind of bottoms out at VG10 which you could argue that because the knives are basically used only against soft things, then that's about all it needs. But I always thought there's more, 
there's more room in that field to get into the really wacky steels or the really high-end steels. Why isn't someone making, you know, one of the knife companies make a bulk batch of S110 V knives, you know? There's probably lots of reasons. Why not have knives made in 4V or crew wear instead of, you know, basic carbon steels? There's all sorts of questions that I have. So it was really cool to see Gary Creeley make his little petty knife in MagnaCut. Uh, this is a, uh, you know, it's a, obviously a custom made knife or like a, a knife where you, you know, sign up for a choice of, of a few different steels, steels that can be sort of more curated by a smaller maker. But um, this should really be the future of kitchen knives, this steel in particular. Even the bigger knife companies, Global should be getting MagnaCut for their blades. They could charge a bit more and the performance would be you would be the bulk knife, the bulk kitchen knife company with the best steel that you could say was the best steel and that would sell kitchen knives. I don't get why the industry is a little bit conservative, a little bit behind on steels. And I know perhaps in pocket knives, we are a little bit too forward thinking about it to the point where we fuss over steels that don't perhaps even matter or get used to the full amount. But really, most people's most used knives are their kitchen knives. And a lot of people, they will go and buy an expensive knife block. They'll go and buy a $600 knife block. When the steel still is, you know, X50CR or something, that does happen a lot, or 440C. For a lot of your German-made knives, it's still just basic 440C. And you're getting a set of, you know, eight knives. What you should be doing, this is my general thoughts on kitchen knives. Get three kitchen knives. They don't need to be in a set, whatever. If they are in a set, if that, if you need that to sleep at night, they all the handles match or whatever, then fine. But get a petty knife, get a chef knife, and then get a santoku knife. I mean, you probably need a bread knife as well, but that doesn't really count. In terms of your main food prep knives, get three knives and get them to the best that you can afford. And that is where you'll, that's what you need. That's, you don't need any more. You don't need all those odd other knives that sort of come in the set. It's just my opinion. Uh, and as such, I really sort of, I'll always do this from now. I'm just going to engage makers that I know or companies that I know to get the three knives as best as I can in the best iterations. And this is in terms of a petty knife is a really good iteration. It's an absolute joy to use. It's chisel grind, uh, chisel ground, magna cut, very thin behind the edge, still holding its edge fantastically because it's magna cut. And uh, yeah, we we are using this knife all the time. Great little size, great little, uh, you know, Apples, pears, fruit, veg. You don't look. You don't feel silly doing a you know a little tiny cut with a giant chef knife. You can just use your petty knife. And absolutely great. Moving on though, my chef knife is currently. This was one of choice. My my Corian handle fell off my Spyderco. So I was like, what's a good uh, chef knife that really needs to be able to ride in the dishwasher every now and then? I know that's heresy, but. Uh, for us, it's just the kids would be helpful sometimes and they'll stack the dishwasher. They don't get it. I'm not going to fuss over it. I'm not going to be that dad that you treated my thing the wrong way. I'm going to throw a tantrum. You know, it's, life happens like that. And so I was after something that's pretty robust, but also a performer. My buddy Chris put me onto this Shun Knives Sora. This is in super high polished VG10. You see that? I've had this for months now. It still looks amazing. It's still really, really sharp, as is often the case with these really, you know, really nicely ground kitchen knives. Even once the initial edge is starting to go, which this probably is, the geometry is what's doing basically all the cutting anyway. And this geometry is amazing. Uh, it's like a clad design, so the VG10 is in the core. It's got a really kind of nice ripply effect there. It's a very good looking knife, which I think is a lot of people's, you know, preference with kitchen knives as well. But also it has survived a few rides in the dishwasher even sometimes when I'm feeling a bit lazy, I'll just chuck it on the top shelf, point the blade up, hope for the best. And it's been fine so far. Uh, it's just got a basic plastic handle. Uh, it's comfortable. It's a good, you know, good size. Just an ideal chef knife. And it's like a laser. It cuts amazingly. Uh, it's a little bit thinner than my Spyderco. And I think I do actually prefer it a little bit to the Spyderco K12 that I have or K11 kitchen knife. Uh, that was a good knife against like more for more robust real sort of cutting through a pumpkin or something. This does feel a little bit spindly. It's a little bit thin. Can sort of get a bit lost between two sort of uh, between an item with high density. That's why I do have a, a more stir, a sturdy Santoku knife for falcon even as well. But this one for your general cutting your vegetables, your meats, absolute dream to use. And simply because I'm using doing so much food prep lately, I'm just trying to cook all my own meals. I'm basically no fast food. I don't want a bit of a health kick. Uh, yeah, this one has been certainly a great deal of joy to me and certainly is making me happy. 
And lastly, I always like to bring out something a little bit silly. This is a Ericsson Bladeworks Z Wear large sort of two-handed, almost kukri chopper. Uh, very good fun knife. I actually have been using this to cut back my wisteria. Now it's uh, winter and you can cut it back, give it a bit of a prune, so hopefully next year it doesn't grow up into my gutters. Uh, the wisteria that sort of cradles my house veranda. Been using this guy on the bits uh, that, you know, when, when I get sick of lopping, I'll bring this guy out and just give it a good old prune back. Swinging it around, you gotta be careful, make sure no one comes up behind you or some copper, cop an Ericsson to the face. But uh, yeah, this is a good little cathartic knife to use. Often big blades like this are kind of just bought for hypothetical reasons, for bottle cutting, for, for that sort of thing. But this one has really held up. The steel is not entirely stainless. You can see it's sort of somewhat tarnishing over time. But uh, what a glorious big piece of steel uh, made by Ericsson, who's one of my preferred uh, custom makers. That's for sure. I've had a few good knives from, from Ericsson. And uh, yeah, I'll perhaps put a link to his Instagram in the in the description below so you can see. So yeah, just a classic case of just a big hearty knife, getting it in your hands, chopping something in half with a big nice kind of swung cut. Uh, that just makes you happy. And if it didn't make you happy, then you probably need to check your pulse because you're probably dead. So there we are. That's five more knives that make me happy in under 12 minutes. Thank you, Mike, for the tag. Go and check out Mike's channel. He uploads very often. Uh, puts me to shame, that's for sure. So good show, old Bean. We'll see you all in 2025 for probably another five knives that make me uh, happy. And thank you for watching again. Ta-ta and farewell. Goodbye.